My name is Brian Watkins and this is my second tutorial for the QuickBooks program in Accounting 231, formerly known as Accounting 232B. In order to help you out, uh, I'm going to give you my test from the last semester of Accounting 231. And I'm hoping, and if you're smart, you'll use this test uh, as a guide to study by first taking it and only watching the video after you have struggled to go through the test on QuickBooks without notes. This will help you know if you're prepared to uh, to take the test that I'm going to write for you next week. Uh, let's see here. We have just put QuickBooks on the computers in the testing center. We're double checking to make sure you don't have any trouble. Uh, if for any reason you would be prompted to uh, to download an update or to take some other action please just say no. Get straight into QuickBooks and what you should see is this screen right here. Okay, This is called the Express Start screen and the biggest difference between prior versions of QuickBooks and the version we now work on is this Express Start. So let's go back briefly to the test. Uh, this is what you're going to see. I'm going to have a uh, some kind of business scenario and in this scenario you can quickly see that it's a simple retail operation and so you're going to create this new retail shop uh, you're going to go down set your preferences according to the test and according to the prior uh, the prior uh, tutorial sorry and then we're going to go through and we're going to book these transactions and this tutorial is going to be very quick about how to do it I'm just going to go through it uh, assuming that you've studied and you've practiced the first tutorial and remember the most important thing you do on QuickBooks is properly book your transactions and that begins with the proper time. So let's go uh, use QuickBooks 2012 to create our new company. If you're going to do this right, print this out and have it next to you. I'm going to allow you to write on it in the testing center and make a mark. Check off each step um, or take a big marker and, and just cross it out as you do it but make sure you do everything. The uh, biggest problem students had on this test was a simple failure to follow the directions particularly when it comes to uploading the test. So let's get started. We'll go to our Express Start and we'll do a, a name here and so uh, I'm sure you're all very creative individuals but I just want you to use your name for the uh, company. That way I can keep track of the 75 to 100 tests I'm going to get. So we come down here, we're going to do a retail shop and our company is going to be a sole proprietorship. Okay, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to go right to company file and you don't see what it's doing but it's creating the file now. typically takes a while so I will pause this. Okay it took about a minute or so for the company file to be created and at alternate times during the creation period it flashed an error message and said not responding just keep your hands off the keyboard let the computer work I'm sure the computer in the testing center is going to be a bit slower than the one here in my office don't uh, if you start hitting escape or trying to get out you're just gonna cause this thing not to work so be patient and if for some reason you get three or four minutes into it without a company file, then you go get the proctor in the testing center. But for right now, let's just start working. And you come to the standard QuickBooks screen. Looks like this. Okay, I closed all the junk that pops up to get to this uh, straight screen. This is the screen you need. And you can see really quickly whether or not you've uh, opened the various things that you need to open. So we'll go over here to edit preferences and I believe one of the things we need to do is set our inventory so we want inventory and purchases orders to be active okay so that's set okay it's gonna close everything and then we're gonna go back to preferences this time we're gonna set our tax now it says right there in your test what's gonna happen with tax yes we're gonna charge it and we're going to add a sales 
tax item here. Let's just do this. Um, go to sale, click out, sales tax name. Uh, we'll just call it state sales tax. I think that's what it says in the test. Okay, sales tax, and the rate that I gave in the test was 8.75, and the tax agency will add that, and I told you use state tax authority. Okay, and then remember, uh, right now we're going to be using dates that don't correspond, so you're going to want to keep your dates, just to be careful, April 1st, because I, I gave this test in the April semester, so the date corresponds. So now we've got our taxes, we've got our inventory, and here's another one. If you don't set this, um, it's in the general. Yes, I want to save them. Make all taxable, yes. If you go into general, my preferences, and turn off the beep. Where is the beep? There's the beep. Turn it off because you're going to be in the testing center annoying everybody if your computer's beeping all the time. So you might be the kind of person that likes to annoy other people, but please uh, just turn the beep off. Okay, so now we have our preferences. Let's go to our home screen. So I clicked the home button to get this back. Now we have our inventory. We can enter our bills, purchase orders. Everything's ready to go. So we look down here on April 5th, deposit 5000 via your dad's check into a bank account at the BYU Hawaii Credit Union as your owner's equity. Record deposits. Yes. Let's call it the BYU Hawaii Credit Union. And this is the operating checking account. Um, don't worry about tax lines, don't worry about opening balance, don't worry about anything else. Just give it a name that, it, that you can find. It's just a bank account, it's not an accounting account. Okay, so save and close. Now, on the 5th of May, or sorry, I'm already making the mistake. On the 5th of April, you're gonna make a deposit. So make sure you get the date before you do anything. It's gonna fight you. Okay, April 5th, good. Okay, received from, and we're just going to say it's um, other, bring that up, because who's paying it? It may be your dad's check, but it's your money, okay? We'll say, all right, and what account is it going to be? It's going to be owner's equity. And what's the memo? This is going to be opening investment. And the memo line is important because it pops up in various places in the schedules. When you create um, reports, you'll want to have as much information as you can. And here's where you get it. So the check number, 8839. When I grade you, I'm looking to see if you put in the information that I give you in the test. So briefly, let's just go right back here and let's look at where I'm, what I'm referring to. Okay, I want to see the deposit, I want to see the number, and I want to see the BYU Hawaii Credit Union, I want to see owner's equity. It's not difficult, but you do have to be careful. You have to make sure that everything that I provide you gets into the computer, because I've put it there for a reason. And if you think about it, I'm not going to waste time on the test, I'm not going to waste my time or your time. So if you see some piece of information here in one of these transactions, it's your responsibility to get that information into QuickBooks. So let's go back to our bank deposit. Here we go. And it's going to be a check. And it's going to be $5,000. Okay, we're not getting any cash back. We're not getting anything else. So we'll save it and close it. And it's going to warn me. It's going to say that owner's equity thing. But remember, you're in charge. You're accountants. You know what owner's equity is. So you hit OK. And so now if we're going to check to make sure we started everything right, we go to reports. It's taking a while. Let's just go up to the drop down then. And we'll say company and financial. And we'll look at a 
standard balance sheet. It's already going to take us forward in time. And there we go. BYU Hawaii Credit Union, $5,000. Owner's equity, $5,000. Not complicated. You just make sure that each transaction gets to where it needs to be. And if you get in the habit of checking after each transaction, you'll make sure to avoid a lot of trouble. Because what is the biggest problem in this test? It's setting the wrong date. So let's go back. Let's do the next one. We'll close the balance sheet. We'll go to our home. Home. And we'll look at our test. Prepare and send purchase order number one for 30 mini refrigerators that you are going to sell to BYU Hawaii students for $125. Purchase order. Okay. The date, April 6th. Purchase order number one. Ship to me. Vendor is going to be Marine Supply Inc. I gave you that name. I expect to see it. Uh, let's just set the date here so that we're careful with every date that pops up. We'll hit OK. Uh, we'll go to our item. And we want 30 mini refrigerators. OK, so we're going to make a new item. When it comes up, it'll be just an inventory part. And the item name or number, this is how you know it, is mini refrigerator. Okay. The manufacturer's part number is given to you. Item B245. And on purchase transactions, when we buy it from the company, we're going to say item B245 because that's what the company calls this thing. But when we sell it, we're going to call it mini refrigerator. I think I spelled that right. So when we buy it from the company, it says your supplier is Marine Supply. They sell for $75. This is probably the single most important screen for your test. Because once you set up an item, it gets very difficult to change the cost and the sales price and all of that kind of thing. So the cost, 75 cost of goods sold. We only have one vendor, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, it is an inventory asset. Just to be safe, let's change this date to April 6th. And our sales price is going to be a healthy $125. Now our income account is going to be merchandise sales. That's where, we, there, that's where it goes. So remember this screen. It's one of the most important. Now we have the item set up. We can order it. Don't forget the quantity. The quantity is 30. 30 mini refrigerators. Uh, the customer is just us, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, no message to the vendor. I don't see anything in the, on the test that we would have to write. So I think that we are done. So let's save it, close it. All right, at this point, we've entered our purchase order. If we went up to our reports and we went to purchases, and we look at open purchase orders, we should see purchase order number one. And if we want to double check it, we can double click on it. It will come up. And even though we don't do this, uh, if we wanted to, let's see here. If we want to see a preview, here is the purchase order. Okay. Now, obviously, all this other information you would enter if we were doing it for a business. Don't forget that what you're doing in QuickBooks is you're really uh, you're, you're preparing these documents to get mailed and they get in files and there's there's a lot more to uh, to do with an accounting system than just to keep track of what's going on. But uh, that's the only time I'll really drop out and take a look at that. So we have our purchase order. Save and close that. We see that it's open. That's good. And a purchase order won't change our financials because it's just an offer to purchase. It's not until your vendor accepts the offer that you have a legal obligation. So you've printed it out. You've mailed it to your customer. Now let's go down to April 7th, 2012. Prepare and take purchase order number two. So we'll go to purchase order. Automatically says number two. We'll adjust the date to 7th. See, it's starting to behave. It figured out that uh, this is going to be a later chronological entry. We're going to add a new vendor, Ace Hardware. Ace Hardware. 
and we're going to change that just because if I don't someone will be confused and forget to change it so April 7th uh, we're not going to enter anything more than that we just want Ace Hardware to show up we want purchase order number two and then we're going to get some new items again very important screen so we'll call it an inventory part and the first part is going to be 30 surge protectors since we figure our mini fridges need clean power so our surge item name is surge protector manufacturer part number is SP20 AMP I expect to see that on the test because I gave it to you and on purchase transactions it's SP20 AMP and on sales transactions it's a surge suppressor two P's actually what did I call it surge protector there we go okay and it costs us surge protectors cost 15 and we sell them for 25 good good and good just set that so we don't forget it's the seventh so everything's good for that part we hit OK an income account oh, sorry forgot the income account merchandise sales all right how many of these things are we gonna buy it says you're gonna buy 30 of them 30 surge protectors now you're gonna click on the next line you have a second item that you're gonna do you can buy more than one thing at a time so this next one is going to be an extension cord extension cord and the part number looks to be EXT 20 amp alright so on purchase transactions it's EXT 20 amp and on sales transactions it's an extension cord it costs us two dollars we're gonna sell them for ten dollars and our income account is sales and we're just gonna clean up the dates to make sure that everything is April 7th alright so April 7th purchase order number two we want 15 extension cords alright that's our completed purchase order so we could put a memo uh, Ace Hardware purchase order now having finished purchase order number one uh, we received this with a bill so let's take a look here at April 10th 2012 on April 10th 2012 10th 2012 we received a an ace hardware um, there is an open purchase order so we say sure bring it in and the terms are 215 net 30 okay I entered that uh, before when I was doing a version of this video so just to understand that if you see terms that are different you have to add them here and the new terms but I think I've gone over that before so let's just back up and so I selected the terms 215 net 30 as it was given in the test this will be the uh, the first order from Ace Hardware okay but the problem is on the bill you have to set up all of the costs that are going to become part of your inventory and your cost of goods sold these costs could include insurance shipping taxes anything that you have to pay that's directly attributable to the item these costs right here are just the raw costs from your supplier so we are told in our entry that they give you the items together with a bill that includes sales tax of 3938 so that means here you're gonna have 489.38 for your surge protector and you're gonna have 32.62 for your extension cords. Okay, at this point, recalculate, you should look at your amount due. And I gave you a clue on the test, your total bill should be $522.
well, $522. So everything looks good there. Uh, 215 net 30. So we've got a discount date. We've got the regular date. I think we're ready to commit. But it's these two boxes. It's the total cost that really throw a lot of students off. And I gave you those numbers in the test. And I would do it on a, on a future test because I don't want to confuse you. So here we go. We have our bill. So we'll save and close the bill. And we'll go to April 11th. The inventory is a bit much for your dorm room, so you rent a storage space and pay $150 for the first month by writing a check to Laie Storage. Use the Write Check feature on your home page. The icon is just under Record Deposit. Alright, that sounds good. So we'll write a check, and we're going to pay to the order of... It's going to be a vendor. They're providing us the storage service. So we're going to call our vendor Laie Storage, Inc. I believe our date is now April 11th. We'll just set that. You, we don't have any additional information. And we're going to print this on April 11th. And we're going to put the information down here. Now, what account? This doesn't, this doesn't mean Laie Bank or BYU Hawaii Credit Union, rather. This is the accounting account that this check is going to go to. And so if you realize, for this check, it'll be called storage expense. Let's go down here, and I don't see storage expense. OK, so we're going to add new. And it's going to be an expense account. OK, so we'll hit continue. And we'll call it storage expense. And you could put it, it's not required here, but just so you understand what's going on, this is the account to keep track of the Laie storage rental. That way, if you forget someday, you've got a little note. So save and close. It's going into storage expense. It's $150. It's first month's storage payment LIA storage. It's not billable, it's not a customer job, it's just a straight check for $150. Um, the memo line should pop up when we recalculate. Come on, pop up. I'm not seeing it. But it's, uh, I guess it lets you do it twice. So we'll just say first month storage expense and now we've got it done. So save and close. So we've sent a check off to uh, the storage people. It's not billable. Alright, I'm looking out over this. I don't see anything else. Okay, so now we're going to go to April 14th. The refrigerators arrive with a bill. Receive inventory with a bill. Your vendor for the refrigerators is Marine Supply. So we'll bring them in. Okay. And let's read carefully. The invoice does not charge tax, but you are charged a shipping fee of $250 for a total of $2,500 due. Okay. Marine Supply does not offer a discount, and your payment is due in 15 days. Ooh, okay. So we'll just go here, net 15. And this will be first order of ref... Let's be careful here. Mini refrigerators. Alright, and we're going to change our amount. Our amount was not twenty five hundred, or not twenty two fifty, but we have to add the shipping fee. It's part of our inventory. So two five zero oh, zero. Oh. And it's not a customer, it's not billable. Purchase order is right. Let's check the date again. 411. I think they arrived on 414. Okay, so there we go. Uh, Save and close. Now, I gave you a hint. After this transaction, you should have $3,022 worth of inventory. So let's go up to our reports and let's take a look at our balance sheet. And what's our inventory? 3022 Okay. And we can pull up a detail on that. We can see that we have 522 from Ace, 2500 from Marine Supply. Don't get confused. This isn't the this isn't the price that you 
ordered them for. This is the price that you actually paid. It has the taxes, it has the shipping costs, and even better, it matches the hint I gave you on the test. So, okay, we're good there. And we're good there. Let's go to April 17th. The guy across the hallway, Todd Smith, wants a mini fridge. He pays you $125 for a mini fridge and $10 for an extension cord together with sales tax. All right, we've got to collect sales tax. We've got to sell this guy a fridge. So let's do a sale. And he's going to give us a check. All right, so let's just create a sales receipt. Why do we not create, let's close this here. Why do we not create an invoice? Because we're not billing your customer and receiving the, the, the payment later. Rather, we bill our customer and receive the payment at the same time. Okay, so what's our customer? I believe his name was Todd Smith. What's our date? It's April 17th. So we'll just make sure that we're always doing April 17th. Okay, Mr. Smith on April 17th. He's our sale number one. He's big sale here. He's going to pay us check number 250. And what's he going to do? He's going to buy a mini refrigerator. He's buying one. Okay, and then let's stretch this down a bit. He's also going to buy an extension cord. One extension cord. All right, the state sales tax. I don't know why this is squeezing that. Let's uh, some way to close this here. I'm not seeing it. Okay, so let's try this. Let's get out of it and let's try to stretch this margin over. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing a way to get at that information. Let's. Ah, there we go. I closed that. All right, now you can see a little bit more, and I can bring it out here. Good. So we've sold Todd Smith mini fridge extension cord one and one. We go get the goods, deliver them, take his check, and deposit the check in the bank on this date. And I even gave you a hint: prepare a sales receipt so that if you worried about whether you'd be able to remember this, okay, sale to. Todd Smith. Sale number one. That's kind of additional because that number one and Todd Smith are also there, but what the heck. Save and close. All right. Now we have to go deposit his check into the bank. Click. There we go. It tells us 417 Todd Smith check 14681. Uh, let's see. 417. Same day. Save and close. All right, now we've done April 17th. Now let's go to April 20th. Score, we sell eight mini fridges on account. So we're gonna create an invoice and we're going to sell them to the School of Business. And it's going to be April 20th. Okay, so April 20th and we look here and it says, so they professors can stash their Diet Coke in their offices. Boy, am I funny. Prepare an invoice, extend terms of 110 net 30. All right, so let's look at the terms. 110 net 30. Okay, I gave you an easy one. You don't even have to create anything new. The quantity, we're gonna sell many refrigerators. We're gonna sell eight of them. Okay. So we, we tell them, thank you for your business. And it looks like if you set your taxes up right, this invoice should reflect sales tax of 8750. Well, there's the 8750. It looks like we did it all right. Um, we could print this. Again, this is the screen that uh, QuickBooks uses to get it in. But what you would do in real life is you would print this. Let's preview it and you get this nifty looking piece of paper with all the official stuff on it that has your terms and your messages and that's where it really comes in handy. I don't think I show you enough of that in the first 
uh, tutorial. So we'll save and close. There's the invoice. Okay. April 24th. Professors can't stop talking about your mini fridges. You sell three more to students who pay cash as follows. Pay cash. That's a clue. That's a sales receipt. So now we're going to have three sales. Martin Jones. Let's do him. Martin Jones. The date is April 24th. April 24th. All right. April 24th. Got to be really careful with those dates. And what's Martin Jones going to do? He's going to give us cash. And he's going to buy... Martin Jones buys a mini fridge and a surge protector. Mini fridge, surge protector. He buys one of each. And he gives us cash of 163.13. Great, we got that one. Okay, save and close. Now let's go do another sales receipt. This one is going to Stephen Woods. And we're on April 24th. And Stephen buys a mini fridge and an extension cord. Mini fridge, extension cord, buys one of each. And he gives us cash of 146.81. Wonderful. Now we got that cash. Save and close. And we got a third sale. And this sale goes to Laura Carter. And April 24th. Good. We got April 24th and Miss Carter is going to pay check 81. And it looks like she is going to buy a mini fridge, a cord, and a surge protector. Mini fridge, a cord, a surge protector. One of each. And she gives us her check for $174. Everything looks good. Save and close. Now we're going to make a deposit because we had a big day and we're holding cash from Mr. Jones, cash from Mr. Woods, and a check from Ms. Carter. So we click all of that and we get it into our bank. Okay, save and close. All right, April 27th, a local property management company will buy your entire remaining inventory. They want everything. So now the trick is you have to, um, let's see here, is it going to be cash? I wrote this test a while ago. Okay, it's an invoice. All right. They want everything. So what we need to do is go to our reports, go to inventory, and go to an inventory stock status by item. Ah, look at that. That tells us here exactly what we have on hand for extension cords, mini fridges, surge protectors. Okay? That is going to come in very handy as we do our invoice. Now we can uh, we can figure out exactly what we need. So let's go back up. I want to write that down here. So inventory, stock status by item. Okay, so we have, I'm making a note, 12 extension cords. We have 18 mini fridge. And we have 28 surge protectors. Okay, now we can close that one and get to our big invoice. Our customer is Paradise Rentals. Paradise Rentals, Inc. Our date is April 27th. April 27th. Okay. April 27th. Okay. And it's going to be terms of 110 net 30. And we're going to prepare the invoice for all of them. So we have 18 mini refrigerators. We have 12 extension cords. We have 28 surge protectors. We have our tax, 
go whoa thank you okay so we have everything here and we're done okay April 29th you pay your bill to marine supply with check number two and your bill to Ace Hardware so April 29th is bill pay day so here's our pay bill screen we want to pay both of these so let's do oh we can't check both because we're only going to do one check at a time so it's April 29th and it's going to be a check and we're going to do the bill to marine supply first the terms were 215 net 30 today is April 29th so I don't think uh, I don't think Marine Supply even offered a discount. So we're good. All right. No credits available for BYU Hawaii. Pay the bill. It's been done. Let's pay another bill. Okay, this one's the Ace Hardware bill. It's still April 29th. Okay. And on April 29th, the discount date was 425. So it looks like we don't get a discount from Ace Hardware. We have a check. It's going to be check number three, I believe, automatically. And we'll pay the bill. Done. Okay. April 30th. The School of Business pays its bill within the discount period. Alright. So if they, pay, if they pay the bill, then we need to use our deposit. So we're going to receive a payment that we have received from a customer and we receive it from the School of Business. The date is April 30th. Okay, the payment method was check 2444, so check, not debit card, check 2444. This was for eight mini fridges. All right, and we're gonna click on, oh, it's automatic calculation. Okay, don't worry about that. Okay, so now, if we look at that and we were in the discount, this is the part that a lot of people got messed up on. This customer has discounts available. Click discounts and credits. So there it is, suggested discount. Your discount account would be sales discounts, of course. So there you go. Um, you've given them their 1088 because they're paying on time. Business professors do that. Done. And everything's automatic. And let's look at it. Discounts applied. We're good to go. Okay, we're back. And what we forgot to do last time, and I had to turn it back to do that, was to receive the payment. So here's the payment from the School of Business. Okay, uh, or sorry, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. We, we received the payment, and what we want to do is deposit the money. So we click on that, the thousand that we got. There's undeposited money, 1,076, and we're going to make this deposit on the 30th. Good. Credit union, good. Save and close. All right, one last payment here. Paradise Rentals pays. This was your big sale. So May 4th. And it was check 499. And they gave you 3305.24. All right. And what did they give that to you for? Oh, sorry, I forgot to put that in. Paradise Rentals. There we go. Under payment, 3339. Well, it has, they have discounts available. So I was trying to help everybody out by telling you exactly how much the amount was. You see in the test it says, hint, this is exactly what they owe you. And it, it confused a lot of people. So what you need to do to get to that correction is go to your discounts and credits. There's your discount. Apply the discount. And now everything matches because you're going to take the 33 out of that payment and you come to the right amount. So just be careful with your discounts would be the the lesson to learn from this. Okay, and then we go to record deposits and we get that money in the bank where it belongs. 
All right, one final transaction on May 5th. You receive your checking account statement from BYU Hawaii Credit Union. It is dated May 1st. You did not have any interest income, but you did have bank charges on this date. Why do I tell you that? Well, what we're going to do at this point is the reconciliation. So we go to reconcile, and you're going to see the statement date is May 1st. Remember, everything I give you, you're going to need it. Uh, the ending balance in your account was given at 5460.75. There's the ending balance. Service charges, you incurred $20, and you're going to need to expense that. And the service charge was imposed on the day that it printed. And we go bank service charges, nifty, it was right there. All right, so we have all the information. It said specifically that you did not have any interest income, so we continue. Okay, and now we have to double check. Our closing balance, uh, 546075, there it is. And our checks two and three have not cleared the account. So let's find checks two and three. Widen this up a bit. Check two was to go back here was to marine supply on the 29th that has not cleared whoops everything but two and three is cleared okay so we'll check 411 has cleared um, the school of business check 244 has not cleared let's go back that was the thousand dollars okay all other transactions have cleared so, actually that Paradise Rentals won't have cleared either because it was after the statement. So uh, it looks like that has something I will change, make that change. So now we have everything marked that has cleared and these two checks did not clear and these two deposits did not clear. And the difference is zero, which is good, that means we can reconcile. So I click on it, it's generating, we want both of them, so let's display them. Okay, and we come up, here's our summary report, and here's our detail report. I want to see both of those. So now is as good a time as any to teach you what you're going to have to do in the testing center. You're going to provide me with all of your statements. Okay, if you read on the test, it says, prepare your financial statements, being sure to set the date to past May 5th. You should have a balance sheet, income statement, copy of the journal, as well as two reconciliation reports. Do all your printing to the PDF printer which is installed on your testing center computer. Alright, so here's my detail. I'm going to print it. I'm going to print it to the Qt PDF writer. Set that. It'll give you all kinds of options. You want the Qt PDF writer. If you get any test papers that are printing in the testing center office, they get really upset with me. So be sure you do this right. Print to the cute PDF. So I print it, and there it is. It's printing off to wherever it goes. We'll get, we'll get it back here. It'll say save as. Okay, so give it a file name that you can recognize. Reconciliation detail, and put it on your desktop. Saved, now it's on my desktop. I can close it. Let's let it stop thinking. There we go. The summary, we're going to do the same way. We're going to print it. We're not going to email it to me. We're not going to do anything else. We're going to print it on Cute PDF Writer. So print. Takes a little thinking. Wait for it. Now it's going to be Reconciliation Summary. And we're going to put it on the desktop. Save. It's thinking, it's done. All right, so now I need my report. So let's go up here, company financial, balance sheet standard, and let's see what's happened. We got money in the bank, that's excellent. We've got a sales tax payable that you'd have to write a check to at some point, and we've got some income here, good. So let's uh, make sure that our date was right, some date after May 5th, that's good. And let's print it. And we're going to call that the balance sheet. Save. 
All right. Now we need the income statement. So we go to company and financial, profit and loss standard. So here's the profit and loss. And we'll change our dates from April 1st. Refresh. There, that looks a little better. So you can see our total sales, total sales discounts, our cost of goods sold. I gave you hints for both of those. We've got our two expenses. Perfect. So we will print that. That one's taking a little longer to come up for some reason. Maybe I hit it too fast. Oh, here it is. It, for some reason it closed. So just look at your system tray if you can't see it. So file name, uh, income statement, desktop, save, done. Now, the most important one for me is the journal because that's what I grade you on to see how well you did. And if you don't give me a good journal, accountant and taxes, journal, I can't give you partial credit. So it is entirely up to you. If you want the best grade possible, make sure that you get all your transactions from April 1st to date. Refresh. There you can see them all. Uh, this goes way down. So if you want to get all your points on the test, you make sure your journal does just right. Print, cute PDF writer. This time it pop popped up. We'll call it the journal. And we'll put it on the desktop. Okay, at this point, you're going to, you're all done with QuickBooks. So we know we don't want that. We're gonna just exit QuickBooks. Everything is fine. Okay, I don't have a student uh, password that I can show you on Instructure what you do, but I tried to show you in the test exactly how it is properly done. You get the proctor over, they enter the code, and that, unleash, that uh, allows you to go down to the test. You upload one, one PDF, and you submit the assignment. Then you go back and you check your submission. And when you're in the screen where you're checking your submission, there is a new uh, feature that opens up and you will be able to upload the remaining PDFs so that they're tied to the same assignment. Um, most of my students had no problem last time, but I had several that just this confused them to no end. They could not figure it out. Um, I, I can't explain it any better than that. So just make sure that you do not email them to me. Uh, you don't print them out on hard copy. You submit them as requested. As for the extra credit, you're on your own for that. It takes a lot of work. You'll need to study it. You'll need to figure that out. But I will uh, reward you with extra credit if you can do that. Just remember that I want a payroll detail report showing that you paid some money. And I also want to see uh, on the income statement some payroll expense. So get me the detail report and the uh, payroll expense, and that will get you your extra credit. Here you go. QuickBooks is pretty, uh, pretty detailed, and I ran through that whole thing with explanations in about 48 minutes. You'll have 45 minutes to do the test, but you won't be stopping to explain everything you do. Uh, hopefully you will be checking, and good luck. Uh, if you have any questions, come and see me.